are you born hope you all are doing well my children today i'm going to introduce you the first lesson of the third week term the lotty project by jacqueline wilson objectives of the presentation are to consider the important characteristics of each character in the story to identify language technique and to discuss how the writer presents the story this reading lesson is about a new class teacher in her first day in the class let me introduce you the two main characters in the story charlie and miss beckworth they are the two main characters in the story All right. Now I would like to ask a question from you. If a new teacher comes to your class, what do you think of her or him? Think about what your reactions are and you can write your views in these three bubbles. Now take your textbook and turn to page number 52 Children are you ready Okay At the beginning the writer tells us children think when a new young teacher comes to the class she or he behaves very strictly Do you know why? Try to find out the answer. Okay, we'll see whether your answer is correct. First we weeks to show children that he or she is the boss. So, what's the answer of being strict? to show children that he or she is the boss then after some times later the teacher then get uh, relax uh, and then get friendly with the students so due to this children think they can mark and do whatever they want uh, this is how the writer thinks what children do okay so according to this uh, last sentence here we find out we can find it a new word what's the new word mark what do you mean by mark i know you have an answer we'll see whether your answer is correct it means mess something are you correct okay this okay now we can see how charlie thinks about a new class teacher so this is charlie and this is how she thinks now according to her in the first paragraph it tells us that she thinks miss beckworth would be she would be young and then in the second paragraph she is telling i love mocking about doing dark things and being a bit cheeky and making everyone laugh even the teachers okay now can you please find it and tell me any character uh, any characteristic that you can find here about charlie yeah she is telling i love mocking what do you mean by mocking i think the we when uh, learn the word mock in the previous slide yes 
Mak means mess something. So she loves to mess her class doing daft things. What do you mean by daft things? Doing very foolish or silly things and being a bit cheeky and making everyone laugh. Even the teacher. So what's her ultimate purpose of doing all this nonsense? To make the classmates laugh and also not only the classmates, even the teachers. Now, as I told you before, Miss Beckworth is another main character that we are meeting in this story. So, who is Miss Beckworth? She is the class teacher, new class teacher of Charlie. So, children, in the second paragraph of page, in page number 52, you can see there is a brief or short description about Miss Beckworth. Shall we read? She had grey hair, grey eyes and grey and white blouse and grey skirt and laced up shoes with a laced up expression on her face to match. Okay. Now, according to this uh, description, what's the common color which links with her personality? Gray. Yes, she had gray hair, gray eyes, gray and white blouse and gray skirt. So, everything is in gray color. Okay. And when she spoke, her teeth were quite big and stuck out a bit. Maybe she is getting angry all the time. Okay. So, when Charlie enters the class, it is already late. Read out what the teacher comments are. Yeah. Uh, in the third paragraph, at the... At the end of the third paragraph, we can see there is a conversation between Charlie and Miss Beckworth. So, uh, Miss Beckworth is telling, Good morning. They say it's not a very good start to the new school year. Right. Though, Miss Beckworth uh, blamed uh, Charlie, did she uh, understand? No, I stared at her. What was she on about? I have no idea why she got angry. I was surprised. Uh, she, wh why was she looking at her watch? I was not late. Okay, the school bell had gone as I was crossing the playground. But you always get five minutes to get to your classroom. Uh, she didn't want to accept her fault. What was her fault? She was late to the class, right? Then, Miss Beckworth said, It's three minutes past time. You are late. Again, Charlie is telling, No, I'm not. We are not counted late until it's five past. Right. So, again, it shows us Charlie didn't want to accept her fault. Right. And this is not a good start. But the teacher took another step. She points out two mistakes of the child. What are the two mistakes? Can you find it out? Yeah. First, she is telling, first you are late and then you argue. So, what are the two mistakes? She was late to the class and she argued with the class teacher. And then Miss Beckworth wanted to introduce herself. My name is Beckworth. What's your name? Charlie answered very politely and carefully. How? Charlie is Miss Beckworth. So this uh, you can see a picture of 
how they are arguing with each other. Right. Miss Beckworth was not satisfied with the answer. She didn't like short names. Instead, she asked her the full name or the proper name. You can find what I told you in page number 53. Your proper name? Charlie and Wright. So, we don't seem to be connecting correctly, Miss Enright. Charlie is not a proper name. It's a diminutive. So, it's a diminutive. Diminutive means uh, it's an unusual or a small, tiny name. Not a proper name. So, she was trying to make me look pretty diminutive, obviously. Right. So, at this stage, Charlie who used to have her own way in the class was little bit ashamed right look at her look at her eyes look at her expressions she feels little bit ashamed so you can read uh, the line uh, from for, uh, line fr uh, 40 from line 40 up to uh, the end of the paragraph, you can see how she was a uh, bit ashamed. I tried to act cool, but I could feel my cheeks flushing. I have this very white skin that can be a real problem when I get mad and, or embarrassed. When you have a lot of long red hair and you get a red face too you start to look as if someone is putting a match to you so it shows us how she was a little bit ashamed the teacher's next question put charlie in a bad mood especially due to the response of other children in the class so now you can pick out the question and the responses in page number 53. Okay, did you able to find out? I will help you. Are you Charles and Wright? So that is the question. And we'll see what are the responses. A few of the kids tittered nervously. Now they some few of the kids feel unsteady and a little bit nervous. That posh Brad Jemmy laughed out loud. Now who laughed at uh, Charlie? Posh Brad Jemmy. So uh, now, according to Charlie, uh, uh, Jemmy has an adjective that is posh prat. Typical Angela and Lisa were looking all anguish dying for me. Now, only Angela and Lisa, they had a very unhappy uh, face towards what had happened to Charlie. Ah. I am Charlotte and write Miss Beckworth, but I have never been called Charlotte at this school, only Charlie. So, now Charlie says her full name. What's her full name? Charles and write. And then again she is telling, but I have never been called Charlotte at this school, only Charlie. Again, Miss Beckworth. Well, I'm going to call you Charlotte. Charlotte. Because in my class, we do things differently, said Miss Beckworth. So, this is one of her characteristics, Miss Beckworth. What is that? She is doing things in a different way. Right. So, now, Charlie immediately begins to dislike Miss Beckworth as she calls her Charlotte. Even though Charlie explained that everybody calls her Charlie.
When Charlie tried to go to her usual place next to Angela, Miss Beckworth stopped her and announces she is going to change the seating arrangements. Children, pick out the sentence, please. It's in page number 54. Hope you found it. No, don't go and sit down, Charlotte, Miss, said Miss Beckworth. I was, I was just about to explain to the whole class that while we get to know each other, I would like to, I would like you all to sit in alphabetical order. According to Miss Beckworth, after they get to know each other, they have to sit in alphabetical order. Now, tell me, what is the reaction of the class? Stunned silence. Why stunned silence? What do you mean by stunned silence? They were really shocked. Why? Because they never used this method. Yes, they never sit in alphabetical order. So, Miss Beckworth made the children to sit in the alphabetical order. Now, please read page number 54 and find the seating arrangements. Let me help you. Anthony Andrews. So he's the first. And then second, Judy Dashwell. And then third, Laura Bernard. Fourth, James Edwards. And at last, whose name is there? Charlotte Enright. The children did not like the new arrangement as the boys have to sit with girls. So they were refusing to follow the teacher's instructions. So we'll see who, had, who, uh, who wanted to refuse. Go back to page number 54 and then read out the conversation. So, Anthony and Bruce, you come and sit at this desk in the front with Judy Tashwell beside you and then. But Judith is a girl, miss, said Andrews. Ah, now, who doesn't like to sit with Judith? Anthony. So, he is Anthony and he does not want to sit with Judy. Then uh, Miss Beckworth replied, Cleverly observed, Mr. Andrew. Yes, yes, you are 100% correct. And kindly nod. I call you Mr. Andrews, not plain Mr. I would prefer you to call me Miss Beckworth, not Miss. Now see, she is she's, uh, telling. Uh, Actually, uh, Miss, uh, she's telling Anthony not to call her by her the title Miss. Have to call with the title and her name Miss Beckworth, uh, as well as she's calling him as Mr. Andrew, not just Mr. So, can you remember that we discussed? That Miss Beckworth, she wants to do things differently. So this is another uh, uh, one thing that she wanted to change. Uh, actually, maybe this is uh, this is their behavior in the class. So she wants to change this behavior and teach them good qualities, uh, good behavior. But 
did Anthony follow her instructions? We'll see. But boys and girls never sit next to each other, miss. Did she, did he follow? No, again she, he is telling miss. Right. So, again uh, you will find a very short description about uh, Anthony. He is as thick as two short planks. Did you get any uh, language technique to your mind? As thick as. What is that? It is a simile. And short planks means he is an unintelligent uh, child. So again he is telling Miss Beckworth, Miss I don't want to sit next to Judith. Now anyhow he, he, he is trying to follow what uh, Miss Beckworth said. So he told first Miss Beckworth and again he uh, as he get used to his behavior again he said Miss. I, anyhow, I don't want to say it next to Judith. And Judith also telling, she is also telling, Well, you need not think I want to sit next to you. Don't think that I also want to sit next to you. Uh, and then very politely telling uh, Miss, uh, to Miss Beckford, Oh, Miss Beckford, that's not fair. So, they are the people who uh, did not like the new arrangement. In this slide we can see how Judith according to this picture we can see how Judith shows her dislike to Miss Beckworth's new class arrangement and then while me, uh, Charlie uh, while she is thinking her uh, about uh, Lee uh, that she can uh, that she can't sit with Angela and uh, Lisa uh, actually, she is thinking that but Lisa is uh, right after me on the register. So, it looked as if we were okay after all. Now, she is thinking though she cannot uh, sit next to Angela, she uh, would be able to sit with Lisa. So, while she is thinking all these things, Miss Beckworth forces Charlie to sit next to James. You can see it in page number 55. James Edwards, you sit at the desk at the back on the left, said Miss Beckworth. With, uh, with uh, Charlie, Charlotte and right beside you. Now, according to James, according to Charlie, James is the most revolting, stuck up and boring boy in the whole class. Now, according to Charlie, he is the most Disgusting, revolting means disgusting, stuck up means too proud, boring boy in the whole class, the whole year, the whole school, the whole town, nobody like him, even the universe. I would sooner squat in the stationary cupboard than, than sit next to him. Right, so it shows us how he dis, how she dislikes James Edwards. Okay, now as Charlie wanted to escape from this see him problem she thought about a new plan so in the uh, pa in page number 55 you can see how she thought a plan I thought quickly my brain going with flash bang aha sudden inspiration okay now we'll see what is her plan she is telling, I am afraid I can't see very well, Miss Beckworth. I said, squinting up my eyes as if I badly needed glasses. Now she is acting that she really needed glasses. If I sit at the back, I will not be able to see the board. Sometimes I still have problems even at, front, at the front. So if Lisa Field can come and sit next to me again, then I am used to her telling me stuff in case I can't read it out, read it for myself. Isn't that right, Lisa? Uh, now she wanted to convince through Lisa's voice. So we'll see whether how Lisa responded. 
This was all news to Lisa, but she nodded convincingly. Uh, though it is little bit awkward, uh, she nodded convincingly very clearly. Yes, Miss Beckworth, I always have to help Charlie, said Lisa. Now, Lisa also accepted and wanted to help Charlie. But Miss Beckworth was not fooled. She asked Charlie to bring her a note from her parents and from an optician. Okay, now children, now uh, according to Miss Beckworth, if Charlie, if she has a problem in her eyesight, she should prove it, no? So even parents should know it. So that's why Miss Beckworth asked her to bring a note from her parents and not so from an optician. Then she can clearly come to a, a, a conclusion. Come to an, uh, uh, come to a conclusion that Charlie has a problem in her eyesight. Okay. And anyhow, she asked her to sit at the back beside James. So it tells us her plan was not successful. So. We have come to the end of the story. Hope you enjoy it and hope you understand it. Children, I prepared you post reading activities. Before you answer to all these post reading activities, I want you to go back to my slides, slide shows and then my uh, audio recording and also refer the textbook after you uh, refer all these uh, things uh, when you get a very clear idea about the story you can answer to all these questions and don't think that this will be another burden to your head because if you can answer to all these questions it means you are thoroughly aware of the story the Lottie project so believe me, you can do this. You can write the summaries, summary and then uh, these questions are really interest, uh, most probably uh, very interesting questions uh, I gave to you. So uh, and very easy. So I think you will be able to answer. All right. I hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation. Hope to see you soon, my children.